In this short video, I am showing you the performance comparison between two select statements. Now these select statements are something that we use quite frequently, probably on day to day basis when you want to create a copy of an existing table, but without the data. Yes, I'm talking about this age old trick where you want to create a copy of an existing table. You want the same schema, the same structure, but you don't want the data. And you know, when we talk to developers, at least people who are new to SQL Server and when someone asks me, okay, they want to achieve something like this, I simply say, okay, you select star into where one equals to zero. Now this phrase select star into where one equals to zero or zero equals to one kind of implies, okay, use that technique, which is a very, very popular technique. And I created a short video, a YouTube short on this channel a few days back and I posted that. And that became quite popular, of course, with uh, folks who are new to SQL, so to say. And then I got a lot of feedback from the community where people talked about the other trick, which is using the top clause, like top zero, which will help achieve the same thing. But then came an interesting fact that some folks told that, okay, top zero will be uh, better in terms of performance in comparison to using the where clause. And I was like, okay, even though practically both of them kind of run in way, way, way below than a second, you know, kind of in 10 to 15 milliseconds, at least on my mini laptop. But let's just go and see theoretically, is there a performance difference between the two techniques? So in this video, your takeaway will be that you'll get to know both the techniques and then you can see performance difference between them and then feel free to choose the one you like. Okay, so let's get started with the demo. I'm using AdventureWorks 2016. And now because we wanted to compare performance, I use this quite frequently. So I'm going to use uh, statistics time, which will give me time metrics like CPU time and elapsed time. And then I'm also using the IO on, which is IO metrics. Now in this case, IO really would not matter because we are not getting any data out. The optimizer would know this based on your query. So we're just getting the schema and the structure. So let's execute this which is the table we are dealing with. We are talking about this table, person.person .person in AdventureWorks table. Straightforward table with a few thousand records. How many out there? About 20,000 records. This is the structure of the table. I'm just showing it to you. It's not very important which table it is. Now, this is the first technique, what you see here now. Select star into, and you're creating a copy, right? So just put any name like person.person .person copy. This is a new table. This table does not exist right now. So this will be created. And then we say select star into this table from which table from the, the existing table, which is person dot person. And the trick is this where clause where one equals to zero or zero equals to one, which is never going to be true. So all you are going to get is an empty table with the same columns, the same schema, the same structure. And this will do the job. The other trick that community talked about in response to when I posted this as a short video was this technique where you can use the top clause and not the where clause. So you can say select top zero star into same thing person dot person. I just put the name as person copy to and from the existing tab table. Now both these tricks are really good. Both of them work. But now we want to see the performance difference between two of them. So what I've done is I've turned on actual execution plan and earlier I have turned on statistics time as well. And now let's go and execute both of them. I just want to first make sure that I have dropped these tables. So let's just go and execute these folks. Okay, drop them. Now let's go and fire our query. So let's go and execute this, both of them job done. First, let's go and verify that we have both the tables. So we have person dot person copy and copy to. So let's go and execute and you will see both the tables do exist and they have the same schema, but there is no data. So functionally both do the job. Now let's talk about the performance difference. So first things first, I will go and look into the execution plan. So let's jump over to the execution plan. And this is the actual execution plan. The first thing that you are going to observe that both the plans are identical. And if you look at cost metrics, it is 50%, 50% and look at the operators and all the metrics around these operators, they are identical in nature. So from a plan perspective, from the optimizers perspective, both are equal in terms of performance. Now, remember when you talk about the optimizer, 
the execution plan, they do not have the actual runtime metrics, right? So this is a plan and you're looking at plan estimates here. So all looks good. They are functionally same. They are all equal. Pretty fine. Now let's go and look at the actual metrics and at least for queries like these, your actual metrics is going to be in the messages tab. And what we are going to focus on is the time metrics. Now really very trivial, so to say, because both of them did execute very quickly, uh, but let's just go and look at the times. So here is the execution time of the first query, right? Which is where one equals to zero. And if you look at the elapsed time, it's about 30 milliseconds, 29 to be precise here. And the one with top clause is almost half. So the elapsed time here is 14 milliseconds. Now, you know, when you have queries like these, which are like 10 milliseconds, 15 milliseconds, etc., it is very important that, I mean, two things here really is, does it really matter like every every millisecond that we are dealing with? Because irrespective, you're not dealing with the data. All you're doing is just creating an empty copy of the existing table. If you run this query multiple times, you will see a variety of this execution time, the elapsed time. Sometimes it is going to be 10. Sometimes it is going to be 15 milliseconds or 20 or 30. And they will be more or less same. But what I have seen is uh, practically, if I keep running this multiple times, the query with the top clause always has milliseconds slightly lesser than the where one equals to zero concept. Okay. So, or the technique. Okay. So let's go and do this once more. So I'm going to drop these two tables. Okay. And I am going to run this once more. And this time let's turn off actual execution plan because we don't need this anymore. So let's go and execute this, jump over to the messages tab here and 11 milliseconds, five milliseconds. So you see the top clause is theoretically again, turning out to be the winner. Let's go and do this once more. And if you see nine milliseconds there and eight milliseconds there. Okay. And let's do one more thing. Okay. Let's cut this and put it on the top. So what do you want to do is you want to run the top clause thing first, and then you want to use the other technique where one equals to zero second. So we just kind of interchange this. Let's go and execute this once more, jump over and you will see now the interesting aspect. Okay. So you have the elapsed time there, uh, 12 milliseconds with the top clause and five milliseconds with the where one equals to zero. Okay. Let's go and execute this once more. Oh, the object is already there. So let's just go and drop this and do this a last time. Execute this and you will get top clauses expensive, seven milliseconds, three milliseconds. And when you reverse it again, right? Let's do this once more. This is SQL Server dynamic execution there and runs in a very dynamic environment. So let's go and execute. Okay, I need to drop the object again. Let's do this once more. And this is my final execution now where I've put the where clause was. six milliseconds, six milliseconds. Okay, all good. And CPU time again, almost equal. Really, practically speaking, there's no difference. You have the same execution plan equal in terms of performance and the actual runtime metrics either way is just waiting with a few milliseconds here and there. And it's just really like the way dynamic execution in SQL Server is the dynamic environment that it runs with uh, given the resources that it has available, the CPU, the IO, uh, the memory, etc. It's just a difference of a few milliseconds. And uh, that's why to the community, the answer is sometimes you may theoretically, theoretically believe that, okay, top clause works better than, uh, better in this scenario because the optimizer does not have to deal with the where clause, but the optimizer knows it. It's all the same, both theoretically and practically. So feel free to use either technique, whichever you prefer. Hope you enjoyed this short video and hopefully this has demystified a few things. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there. Video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. 
follow us on Twitter at the rate sequel Maestros and myself A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.